Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. It's very early here in the morning on Tuesday, January the 6th, 2019. I'm surprised how upset I am about this. I need to vent a little bit. Um, some of what I'm going to say is going to be completely trivial, but it matters to people who really believe in the integrity of sports news, who don't want to be dealing with fake news from athletes, and who want to make sure that the sports we follow have standards. So I'm going to throw figuratively a challenge flag here, a red flag, on two awfully good athletes, right? But these guys need to be publicly reprimanded, right? And the problem is, of course, there's so many sponsors out there. There's so many agendas out there. People want access. They want to pamper pampered athletes. Well, let's cut that out here. First red flag I'm throwing and these guys are influential. I'm throwing two red flags. The first one I'm throwing is on LeBron James, right? Great player. Some people I follow who I believe in, right? Colin Cowherd, Nick Wright on Sirius XM Radio. Believe that LeBron James is the best basketball player ever, right? Let me go further. A bar I hang out at. I've been dragged into, gee, at least four different conversations over the years where some younger people want to argue the point that LeBron James is the best basketball player ever, right? Okay, fair enough. If I was born yesterday, maybe that's what I'd think, right? But LeBron needs to stop insulting us. He needs to stop coming up with bogus arguments. First, LeBron on his best day isn't Michael Jordan, right? I'm just telling you the views out there. It's one I hold. Kobe on his best day was Michael Jordan, but not LeBron, right? LeBron's a big coordinated guy. Michael Jordan and Kobe, they're freak athletes. Right? Freak athletes. Let me also say, too, you go back through NBA history, and you're going to come upon people like Larry Bird, who understand 10 rebounds. We'll just pick a number. 10 rebounds. That's what Larry Bird, the great outside shooter, right? Really, one of the dominant shooters in NBA history. Well, the 10 rebounds is Larry's career average per game. Folks, LeBron James is not at nine, right? He's not at nine. I'll say this too. Magic Johnson, as tall as LeBron, folks, there's simply no comparison, none whatsoever, in terms of assists. Let me go one step further. If you lived through the 1980s, you understand there is no comparison whatsoever in terms of leadership qualities, right? Magic's on a team filled with shooters, right? Filled with shooters. Kareem, Bob McAdoo, Worthy, right? Byron Scott, and all of these guys defer to Magic. Magic runs the show. Right? And this is a guy who leaves college after his sophomore year. He walks into a room of adults and they all start deferring to him. The Lakers then start winning championships. Right? By contrast, Kyrie Irving heard enough of LeBron's stuff. He hit the door. LeBron was so passive aggressive that after four consecutive NBA Finals appearances, he gave interviews where he said he just wanted to be sure that the Miami Heat was committed to winning. 
regarding his decision on where he was going to go next. He had his boys, Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade, sitting down and meeting with him. They were trying to recruit him to stay with the Heat. Now, Jordan has bigger gonads than that. Jordan wouldn't expect Scottie Pippen and Dennis Rodman to beg him to stay with the Chicago Bulls. Right, folks? It, it just would never happen. Understand, it's just a different level of presence and leadership. But if LeBron thinks he's the greatest of all time, look, fine. We can all think we're the greatest. Sounds good to me. But where he crossed the line, and understand I'm in the Bay Area, where he crossed the line was in claiming that by winning a series in which his team was down three games to one, and he then causes the suspension of Draymond Green. Right? LeBron tries to walk over Draymond Green. Draymond lashes out at LeBron. Gets suspended for a game. Right? Gets suspended for a game. And you mean to tell me that LeBron is going to point to that series? Right? One that Cleveland wins in seven games after a player is suspended. And he's going to say the fact that we came back in that series in which they were down three games to one at the time of the suspension makes me the greatest of all time. It's just downright laughable. Right? That's pathetic. You don't think Jordan, Magic, Bird wouldn't have won that series once Draymond Green, a guy who won Defensive Player of the Year one year, a guy who finished runner-up another year. An argument can be made, folks, that Draymond Green's a Hall of Famer. He's certainly one of the most valuable warriors. Right, folks, you can't talk about the Warriors being a great team and then talk about how you beat the Warriors when you know you were getting your ass kicked until a significant warrior got suspended. Let's also not rewrite history. LeBron's talking about being the greatest of all time because he won a seven game series. Jordan, six rings, never forced to a seventh game in an NBA Finals. Also, LeBron's here talking about how he's the greatest of all time because he beat the Warriors. Oh, you're talking about the team that swept you this last year? Sweep! You're talking about the team that beat you in five games the year before that? And let's face it, the reason you won that one game was because of the player who had enough of you who decided he was going to go to Boston. Let me also say this too, that game seven, and LeBron had a magical game. That game seven, the year Cleveland won. Look at the box score, look at Draymond Green's numbers. Folks, that's the guy who got suspended. We can't even argue his value to the Warriors because it's there in the box score. Let me say too, I was in a bar, and I know people are going to talk about LeBron's block. How come no one's talking about the shot Kyrie Irving hit that made that victory possible? Right, so let's just say if a guy is going to point to a basketball series and say that's the series that made me the greatest of all time, can we point to a series that doesn't have a suspension Shouldn't LeBron, if he's going to be as honest as possible, shouldn't he have said, you know what, after Draymond Green got suspended, when we were down three games to one, that's when I proved I was the greatest of all time against a depleted Warriors team. Shouldn't he have said, when we got to game seven and Kyrie Irving hit big shots in the fourth quarter, 
and we win the game. That's when I showed you I was the greatest of all time. Those statements would be laughable. As laughable as LeBron's statement that beating the Warriors made him the greatest of all time. Look, I know we all want history to remember us at our best, but let's be real here. Let me also say this too. Just to understand in the NBA, they didn't count some stats during a period of time. You realize that for a big chunk of Wilt Chamberlain's career, they did not count block shots. Could you imagine Chamberlain and Russell with those categories counted? You know, Jerry West, during his career, Mr. Clutch, think about the nickname, right? Mr. Clutch. I've spoken to old timers who tell me that Jerry is closer to Michael than anyone else, right? During my time watching basketball, I can tell you Kobe is closer to Michael than anyone else. Well, I'll just say this, and Kobe obviously isn't Michael. Just look at the shooting percentage, just food for thought. But understand for much of Jerry's career, and Jerry, besides the great shooting and stuff like that, Jerry was actually a defensive wizard. For much of Jerry West's career, they didn't count steals. I believe they start counting steals Jerry's last season when Wes had slowed down tremendously, right? Father Time is really the champ. Father Time's unbeaten. So Jerry slows down tremendously. Jerry's last year, I, I believe Jerry averages at least two steals a game. Right, understand you can't be Michael Jordan without the defense. Right? Jordan, forget the far more scoring titles than LeBron James. Forget that. By the way, that's in a career where Jordan takes a break of greater than a season in the middle of the career. There's a Ted Williams quality here. Right? Forget the fact that with the break, Michael Jordan has several times the number of scoring titles that LeBron James has. Forget that, right? Just look at the all defensive teams Jordan's on. When you think of Michael Jordan, it's a two-way thing. Now LeBron himself has been on a number of all defensive teams, not the number of Michael Jordan. Now when you're gonna say you're the greatest of all time, you have to factor in the idea that Jerry West was one of the league's better defensive players. That if you total things, Jerry West likely has far more steals, far more steals than LeBron James. Right? I've been here online and I criticized in earlier videos the defense of Larry Bird, right? I was commenting on the fact that Charles Barkley once said, I'll never be the worst defensive player in the league as long as Larry Bird is in this league, right? Understand Larry Bird made something like three all defensive teams because Larry could read passing lanes like a defensive back in football and Larry had a large amount of steals. Right? Look at Magic Steals. So it's okay. Look, I'll, I'll sit in any round table and hear the LeBron crowd, his advocates, fans are loyal to him, say he's the greatest of all time. I'll even ponder the thought. But don't throw salt in the conversation by then saying it's because he beat a team that had a guy suspended after they were up three to one on him. Come on, <laughs> that's, that's ridiculous. LeBron, you're a great player. Don't embarrass yourself with weak arguments like that. 
right? I understand he made his statements as part of some documentary being filmed for one of these sports outfits, right? Let's just hope that LeBron is able to then laugh at himself and say, look, you know, this wasn't my strongest argument. This wasn't the best moment of my career. Let's talk about another guy who has been pursuing an argument in public that's just downright ridiculous. Now let's be clear here on what it means to be a champion in boxing. Folks, it means you're the best, right? When they say middleweight champion, it means you're the king of the division. Now I agree, we live in an era where there are a few sanctioning bodies. So the guys who want to remove all doubt, right, will try to become unified. Think Alexander Usyk at Cruiserweight, right? You want to be viewed as the best, the best. Well, let me just say, you can't be the best. You can't publicly consider yourself the best. The public's not going to consider you the best. If there's an unbeaten lineal champion who's still around, who wants to fight you, right? I can't go around saying, hey, I'm the best middleweight, and there's some dude who's the lineal middleweight champion who's calling me out, and I'm not fighting him. That's not the way the world works. So understand, when we use the word undisputed, right? When you say Alexander Usyk is the undisputed cruiserweight champion, that word presumes that there's not a lineal champion at cruiserweight who's unbeaten, who's calling out Usyk, who Usyk is refusing to fight. Right? It's understood you're not undisputed if there's a lineal calling you out who you're refusing to fight. It's not just about these alphabet soup belts. The word undisputed means exactly what it states. No one can dispute it. You're the top. Well, at heavyweight, folks, you have a lineal champion who's still unbeaten. Who wants to fight Anthony Joshua? As long as Tyson Fury exists, as long as he's calling out Anthony Joshua and wants to fight him, then Anthony Joshua needs to take the word undisputed out of his mouth. Does he not know that boxing fans go back generations? Does he not know that there's some old men in the crowd with beards, with gray, right? With this, whatever this is, a griff who remember Ali, Foreman, Tyson, Lewis. Folks, the heavyweight division, Klitschko's, the heavyweight division has a history. The word undisputed has a historical meaning. Right? Lennox Lewis, I saw him in an interview, and he was talking about how he fought Evander Holyfield. He knew he had to fight Evander Holyfield because he wanted to be undisputed, right? Lennox Lewis wouldn't be able to make those statements if there's some unbeaten lineal guy in the background who Lennox Lewis is actively not trying to fight. Can we also get past the point where we ignore the elephant in the room? where Deontay Wilder fights Tyson Fury, we'll be charitable here and say at least half the boxing crowd believes Tyson Fury got jobbed in that fight, including Lennox Lewis, including Floyd Mayweather, right? Can we stop ignoring 
Tyson Fury giving interviews to members of the press where we say, wow, I really hope to fight Deontay Wilder. Can we cut that out? You know, if Anthony Joshua doesn't realize how insulting that is to longtime boxing fans, then the people around him aren't doing a good job. Somebody needs to take this young man over to the corner of the room and say, hey, player, this is not the way to play this. If you're going to use the word undisputed, you need to follow it up with things like, look, that's why I need to fight Wilder and Tyson Fury. I'd have more respect for the brother if he said, look, I want to be lineal. <laughs> right? You know, he should be out there saying, you know, Fury beat Vladimir Klitschko before I did. So he became the lineal. Right? I fought Vladimir Klitschko. I fought Joseph Parker. Right? I want to be the lineal heavyweight champion. I've done the work. I've picked up these alphabet belts. Now I want to do what's necessary to remove all doubt. But if you're not going to do that, if you're going to try to debase the meaning of the word undisputed, to exclude an active, unbeaten lineal champion, then yeah, you're going to get booed. I'm hearing fans have had enough of this corporate routine Joshua's been pushing. I'm hearing some fans are actually starting to boo him. No doubt it's people who understand that the word undisputed means that you have to beat the lineal champion. That you can't be the king of a division if you don't have the lineal crown. If that guy is the mockingbird for the division. Right, This would be like Ray Leonard wanting to win the middleweight title and deciding he's not going to fight Marvin Hagler. That doesn't work. That's an appeal to casual fans who themselves are trying to ignore Tyson Fury. Right, We'll know when one man stands atop of the heavyweight division. That's when that man cleans up the alphabet belts and beats the lineal. Until then, we're not going to have an undisputed heavyweight champion. Right? Tyson Fury himself knows he won't be undisputed until he fights Anthony Joshua. Right? Understand you can't have multiple unbeaten guys with shares of the belt, whether it's an alphabet soup share or whether it's the lineal share, call themselves undisputed. That's not the way it works. Joshua's a hell of a fighter. Maybe he does become undisputed, but he won't get that by fighting Deontay Wilder. Wilder knows it. Wilder's gone after the lineal. Wilder's tried to go after Joshua. Right? Wilder gets it. Tyson Fury gets it. Anthony Joshua needs to get it. I'm surprised the boxing press actually sits there with a straight face while Joshua says lines like, I want to be undisputed. The next question would be, okay, well, why aren't you fighting Tyson Fury? That should be the next question. Right? These athletes are in bubbles. I have no doubt that Joshua heard the boos and was baffled. The people he should be talking to are folks like Lennox Lewis. Guys who have traveled that road. Right? Even this nonsense. Lennox Lewis gave an interview where he said, look, you need to offer Deontay Wilder or Tyson Fury a percentage of the purse, right? Understand, Michael Buffer wears a tux in the ring in announcing fights because boxing has a gentlemanly side, right? You need to treat other people with respect, especially when you want their titles. So Lennox Lewis, 
said, hey, you want to give a share, not a flat fee. You want to give a share of the gate to your opponent. Right, folks? That makes sense to me. So here I am looking at a young guy, and forgive me, I have a few decades of age on Anthony Joshua. Here I am looking at a young guy misusing the word undisputed. I'm like, whoa, this dude's saying undisputed and he's not fighting the lineal? <laughs> I'm like, that's, that's laughable, right? I'm seeing this young guy misuse the word undisputed. Then I'm seeing him offering, by heavyweight championship standards, minimum wage, right? Flat fee. Hey, player, I'm going to treat you like a slave, right? Here's what you're going to get. Meanwhile, me, depending on how big the fight is, I might be literally out of the picture, right? He's offering guys with multi-million dollar box office appeal, guys who could make millions without him, right? That Wilder Fury rematch, oh, I can't wait for that. That's going to be dope, right? He's offering them flat fees and stuff like that. He's gotten a little bit too carried away with his box office receipts, Right? I'm just telling you, look at Hollywood. A lot of stars who were the number one box office attraction are having a problem drawing flies these days. Don't let success go to your head to the point where you forget the concept of karma, where you start treating people who could give you a historical legacy in a way where you're only offering them flat fees and not a chance to participate in all of the profits, right? So Joshua, like LeBron James, two big names in the sports world, needs to clean it up. Otherwise, you're going to have people like me snickering when some basketball player says, yeah, that series made me the greatest of all time, right? Some guy with what, one, one scoring title or two scoring titles is trying to compare himself to Michael Jordan, right? And if you're a fighter in a sport where, folks, you <laughs> you have some active fighters who've been undisputed champions, right? Terrence Crawford, Alexander Usyk, the press should ask them, Terrence, if there was an unbeaten lineal champion in your weight class when you were going for the uh, all the belts, would you have fought him? Would you have called yourself undisputed without fighting him? Could you imagine if there was an active lineal cruiserweight champion and Alexander Usyk without fighting the dude that said, I am the undisputed cruiserweight champion? That'd be laughable. Right? Dare I say that statement might draw booze, like some of Anthony Joshua's recent comments have. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If you believe that Joshua can just ignore the lineal champion, <laughs> I, don't, I don't even get the argument, folks. I got to tell you, that, that argument's way over my head. He can just ignore the lineal champion, uh, who's unbeaten, and he can fight the guy who just fought the lineal champion and was not awarded the victory. However you scored that Wilder fight, Wilder doesn't leave the ring with the victory, right? If you think that Joshua can fight a guy who, in my opinion, Fury's already conquered, officially has gotten a draw with, could beat that guy and then be considered the undisputed champion, please leave those comments in the comment section of this video. Educate a brother. Let me just say this too. At a different time, right? And their historical twist to this. You had a guy who became heavyweight champion. And you had a public say, look, man, you're not the real champion. Because there's an unbeaten guy who was a great champion. Who has since retired from the sport. Right? So you know what happened. Jack Johnson was then open to fight Jeffries because Johnson needed to prove that he was the best. 
So Jeffries comes out of retirement, and you have on January the 10th, excuse me, January the 4th, 1910, you have the fight of the century, they called it. Right? The reigning heavyweight champion against the retired, unbeaten former champion. Right? Folks, that's how important status is. Right? You know, Johnson could have said, hey, this guy's retired. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to fight him. Johnson could have even gone the other way and said, hey, when Jeffries decides to return to the sport, he needs to fight some other guys to get ranked. Folks, that's not the way men do it. Right? Johnson fought Jeffries. Beat the daylights out of him. Right? When Johnson left the ring that day, even his critics understood they were dealing with the heavyweight champion of the world. Right? If Anthony Joshua wants that level of gravitas, he's going to have to stop telling us about his dream of fighting and becoming undisputed without fighting Tyson Fury. He needs to stop that dream. And he needs to get back to the one where he beats other claimants to the throne, right? Deontay Wilder, still unbeaten. And Tyson Fury, the lineal who is still unbeaten, right? You can't have a guy with a legitimate claim to the championship who's undisputed, who, excuse me, who's unbeaten, who's a contemporary of yours in your division, and then try to claim that you're undisputed because you beat a guy who that unbeaten lineal already tied with. That doesn't work for me. Let me know in the comments section whether it works for you. Thanks for stopping by.